Yeah, I, this, <laughs> the summary of this entire drive is this car is way better than it has any right to be. I love new cars. There's something about thinking about the engineers and designers sitting in a room together with a clean sheet of paper and building something from nothing. And then there's new car companies, companies like Tesla, Rivian, and Lucid, with their own vision of what the future of the automobile should look like. And then there's this, new cars from new car companies from new countries that never made cars before. We're in Vietnam with VinFast to look at this. So this then is a look at the future of a car made from a country that didn't really make cars before. And today we're gonna see if this is any good. This is the VF8 and this is Fully Charged. Fully Charged Live is coming to California this September 10th and 11th, powered by Electrify America. Get your tickets to the number one EV and home energy show now. VinFast intends to bring its electric car models to the U.S. market this year and has plans in place to have the factory in North Carolina up and running by 2024, where it will build cars and batteries. And before you rule them out as just another new car brand that will never make it to mass market production, you should know that VinFast is bankrolled by Vietnam's largest conglomerate, the Vin Group, a colossal company with fingers in just about every pie you can imagine. There are Vin homes, Vin schools, Vin universities, and an all electric Vin buses. Vin Smart manufactures mobile phones. Vin AI are specialists in machine learning. There are even Vin Wonder amusement parks. It's a big company and one renowned for making its goals happen fast. So the VinFast VF8, we're here in beautiful Vietnam to check this thing out. So why is this car important? Well, this is Vietnam's first foray into electric vehicles and they've come out swinging with two models that I think are just perfect for the American market. Crossover SUVs like this, the VF8, and I think the better looking bigger brother, the VF9. But we'll talk about the VF8 here today. So in terms of styling, they actually went with Penn and Farina the guys that made a lot of the Ferraris you know and love, and one of my favorite cars growing up, the Acura Honda NSX. So styling is, is quite nice. I think in terms of the look, it looked a lot like a lot of the other crossovers I see in this space. It's got good front fascia. This is the kind of standard VinFast grille and design language. It carries through pretty much throughout the entire car. So out here we have aero wheels, which is good, right? Because fun fact, the biggest deterrent to range in an EV is actually the wheels. So they've got that covered. Come along here, pretty well sculpted, little design around the bottom quarter panel. And along the back, it kind of looks like, you know, like a Porsche Macon or something like that. Good, good styling all the way around. And I think the back is particularly striking personally because they've got again, the VinFast design language, the segmented taillight design, a little spoiler on the back, and all around, just a generally good package. Look, it's a crossover SUV. You've seen them before. This is not really all that new. Generally, I think it's well-designed. And like I mentioned before, the real looker in the family is the VF9, which I think looks fantastic. But the VF8, the little brother, also I think is a, is a solid, good family EV choice in terms of styling. So this is the interior of the VF8. And again, just a really overall good package. The VinFast V design language kind of runs out here in the front as well. Good soft touch up in here. It's a little bit hard touch there and here, but I'd say it's kind of a middle of the pack, mid luxury section car. Maybe like a higher pointed RAV4, maybe a lowly appointed Acura RDX, something like that in that range. But all this is really nice soft touch, good space for things, and a really nice size landscape infotainment screen. One of the more striking design choices is this gear shifter, which kind of looks like a Lamborghini in terms of the layout. <laughs> but that's kind of cool. Cup holders right there. Your music controls are kind of like Mazda style right here at your fingertips, which I like. The steering wheel is 
on the thinner side, if I'm honest, but it does get meteor right where you're supposed to grab it. And uh, the touch buttons are all really nicely laid out as well. No capacitive touch here, which I personally don't care for. And you've got stocks and everything else. Let's jump in the back seat and see how that fares. So I'm right about six feet tall and I have the front seat positioned pretty much where I would be. I might be a couple inches further back, but you can see the leg room in the back is cavernous and headroom is quite similar as well. At six feet, I think you'd have no problems. Now, if you're just a giant like Jack at six five or six six, well, maybe it might be closer, but honestly, I think for most people, more than enough room back here. Good layout of charging ports for USB charging. You've got vents back here speakers in the door, good deep pockets here on the door, and you've also got cup holders and, and no storage, but a little armrest for the back. Uh, overall, I think well laid out. The interesting choice is lack of a panoramic roof, which I feel like every EV has now. And I don't know that I care too much, but if that matters to you, you're gonna notice that, uh, yeah, that's kind of absent in this car. We'll have to wait and see if maybe other models for North American markets in introduce that. Like we mentioned before, this is a Vietnamese version, so things might change a little bit by the time you get them where you live. talk about expectations what this car is and what this car isn't this is not a performance SUV like this is not a Porsche make on equivalent right this is a family cruiser and as a family cruiser it's really competent I would say this car is better than it has any right to be this is VinFast first EV and we've only been making cars for a couple of years in general gas cars before this and all that being said they kind of nailed it it's a it's exactly what you'd expect it to be comfortable body roll is is pretty good again it's a bigger suv but because that battery pack is on the floor it doesn't feel like your typical suv the closest comparison i would draw to is probably a volkswagen id4 the seats are really comfortable which adds to the general feel in here as well this is one of those cars i think you definitely need to go out and check for yourself because i think it just does a good job of being versatile and all around competent and the suspension is really plush and comfortable. The roads here in Vietnam, especially on this test course, are fantastic and smooth, which we can't say the same for in Southern California where we live. But I think this would be one of those cars that would be a great road tripping car. There's two variants that will be shipped into the US. Both will have dual motors. The Eco model will have 248 horsepower and the Plus model will have 402. So more than capable cars and if you need that all-wheel drive all the cars for the u.s i believe are going to be dual motor and maybe in the future vinfast can offer like a performance boost option or something and, and dial in performance even further kind of like what tesla does with their non-performance models because i would probably pay a couple grand for that this car has more than enough power i think they've they've erred on the side of being smooth right if you map the throttle very aggressively, every time you lift and pick up your, your right foot, the car will be very jerky. And so they've gone for a much more refined kind of a ride. But I like the performance. I would personally probably dial it up as high as I could because I just like that instantaneous feel, right? It's electric motors. And we, we, have that, we have that option. One of the other really cool things about this car, it's kind of unexpected and kind of above and beyond what they needed to do, I think, to deliver on their first car is really intuitive home automation control. So I'm not sure which protocols and what standards and what products they'll talk to, but they plan on allowing you to be able to control your thermostat at home and do cool things where you could set the temperature before you arrive, turn off lights, open your garage, check the garage status, things like that. That's, that's gonna be a cool touch. And it all happens here on the infotainment screen. So like we mentioned, one of the really amazing things when new car companies and new countries do cars for the first time is they bring their own unique perspectives and takes. And I've never seen 
any other EV company bring this much attention to home automation and connectivity and having your car be kind of the central hub for your connected world. And that's, I think, the greatest thing about the VinFast story is you get new engineers and new product owners, new people with new ideas, which will kind of drive the entire industry forward. Otherwise, you'd have the same five or six companies from the same three or four countries. And uh, after a while, you're going to get stagnant, right? So that's really the, the coolest part about this. Really quickly, also, one of the things I'm really impressed with is how zippy the UI and the screen of the infotainment system is. In the future, this car will come with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay via software update over the air once they have their certifications, which I think will be a great touch for people who are looking for that. It's the kind of car that you would expect from an automaker who's been making cars for a long time, and the kind of car that you're impressed when someone just kind of nails on their first take. One of the coolest features I found is that heads-up display, which is, I wish every car had it. I don't know why they don't. It just feels well thought out. That's the best thing I can say about it. It's just what you'd expect. That's exactly what I love about this car. Now there's not a lot of details about charging speeds, but it does support level one, two, and three. Charge door is here, and you've got your J1772 and your CCS fast charging ports as well. So this then isn't just a new car, it's not just a new car company, it's a new car from a new car company in a new country and their vision of what the future of mobility will look like. Between new cars, new concepts and a battery subscription model, they think they might just have the answer for more and more car buyers to buy electric vehicles over gas cars. Are they right? Well, time will tell. Don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe and if you have been, thank you so much for watching.